What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast. It's another Tuesday, and I am here today to beef a little bit with the postseason programs. Not the biggest fan of the way they've been put together. I have some complaints, more constructive con criticism than anything else, about some of the cards they've released. We're going to talk about all of that, of course, in this episode. I will preface this entire conversation by saying the Division Series program cards were significantly better than the Wild Card Series cards. So thank goodness they at least upgraded there. Again, relievers remain relevant, but we're talking about mostly, mostly, the position players here. Thank you guys for being here for another week. Your support means the world. Before you guys go today, whenever you go, hopefully you make it all the way to the end, but whenever you guys go, make sure you like before you leave and comment. Comment what you think so far of these postseason programs, what you think of the cards, if you agree or disagree with the opinions that I'm saying. Uh, also, we're on the road to 2,000 subscribers. Don't forget to hit the gosh dang sub button. All right, into the episode. So, the first thing I want to say, among the other many things I will say, I don't, I, I understand why they changed the way postseason content is dropped. In the past, what they would do for every round, let's say it's the wild card round, they would only give us players from the losing teams. This way, they ensured that as players advanced and had better and better postseasons, they were on the table to receive the best card possible. But they're not doing that this year. They're giving us cards from every team at every round. So what happens if the Rangers make the World Series? I'm recording this on Sunday, by the way, so if any of these teams get eliminated after I record this, my apologies, lo siento. But if the Rangers make the World Series and Evan Carter's the World Series MVP, what are they going to do? Are they going to give him another 99? Are they going to just go back in and change this exact card and make it better? Like, Nick Castellanos has been on a tear. What if he does a thing? Bryson Stott. You know, all the, uh, uh, Jordan Alvarez, this card is so mid, we'll talk to that, talk about that in a second. What if Jordan is, who's having like an insane postseason, or Jose, Al Jose Altuve doesn't have a card, never mind. Uh, who else is left? Uh, Lourdes Goriel. What if the D-backs make some sort of crazy comeback? Right now they're down 3-2 to the Phils. What do they do with Lourdes if he decides to be the World Series MVP? So there's just some discrepancies there with how they've done it in the past and how they're doing it now. I am not here to say this way is worse than the other way, or that the other way was better than this way. Truthfully, I don't know what's better or worse. However, it's it's a little concerning that they're not taking these things into account, or they're not, like, transparent with how it's going to work, or, like, I'm concerned. Let's just say the Phillies win the World Series. Shout out to Phillies fans. That comment will make you happy. And Nick Castellanos is the World Series MVP. He's already got a card, so what are they going to do? Is Bryce Harper just going to get a crazy postseason card? Like, I, I'm I'm concerned for how this is going to work. Because they might have backed themselves into a corner. So we'll see. It will all be revealed in time. I also don't like that it's been taking so dang long to get these programs out. We just got the Division Series program, and it was the dang middle of the Championship Series. But yeah, that's, what, that's fine. That's not the end of the world. It's just a little confusing. But what I really want to talk about in this episode today, I'm not going to review the Division Series program card by card. What you guys are staring at on my screen, or what you guys are listening to, I will do my best to articulate this for the audio-only crowd, because you guys are the homies and the OGs. I have put together a roster here of all the 99 hitters, including the bench. As you can see, the only postseason hitters we didn't use... Here we go. We're 98s and below. Nobody cares about Tommy Pham, Tyrone Taylor, Alec Thomas, Kevin Kiermeyer, Aaron Hicks, Santiago Espinal, Taylor Walls, Ga uh, Gabby Moreno, and Brandon Walsh. Uh, Marsh, excuse me. Respectfully, nobody cares about them in terms of this game. I put the four, only four starters we've gotten so far. I, I guess technically Zach Wheeler counts too. We didn't get him in a program though. You know what? I don't have Zach Wheeler. I'm not going to go buy him. Regardless, that Zach Wheeler is very good, so he doesn't fit my narrative here. Uh, and the bullpen is just whatever we have outside of Huascar Brasoban, Paul Seawald, Tyler Wells, Cody Bradford, Pierce Johnson, who all stink. Eh, Brasoban's okay. But what we're going to do, we're going to go through some of these cards, 
and compare them to previous very good cards they've gotten and show you why I think some of the postseason program is missing the mark. First things first in terms of this segment of the episode. I'm going to start with a bold statement. Some of you guys might not agree. This is my question of the day. We don't do those a lot. Consider this the question of the day. So please answer it down below. In my opinion, because these are postseason cards, every single offensive player should have minimum 115 clutch. You could argue they should all start with 120 so you can get them to max at P5 because it's the postseason and every single thing they're highlighting here, Royce Lewis, crushed two home runs to carry the offense. He has max clutch, but I'm just using this as an example. Crushed two home runs to carry offense in game one victory. Austin Riley, launched go-ahead two run homer. Evan Carter, uh, flash the leather and the bat. That one's pretty generic. Michael Harris, game-ending double play. Like, these are all moments that are incredibly clutch. So, in my opinion, every postseason card should have max or close to clutch. Okay? That's my first opinion. You guys are all going to argue with me and hate that, but that's my opinion. Next, there is no reason, no discernible reason, as to why a card released now in the postseason program should be less than the earlier 99 version of the guy from set 1 or 2, even set 3. So we're going to go through some of these guys who have relatively comparable previous versions. We're going to talk about them, okay? So Evan Carter has a Tops Now card. So I'm just curious what that card looks like. He might not play left field, though. There we go. Okay. So the Tops Now Evan Carter, which is a 95 overall that I admittedly have P2 because I've liked that swing quite a bit. He has higher contact left. Higher vision! Higher... Excuse me, arm strength, but that, that's just the, that's because of a parallel difference. That doesn't count. Um, nitpicking here. I don't want a 99 postseason card to start with 66 vision. Uh, nitpicking, the least problematic of all the things we're about to talk about. But it just, it, it's just, it's just odd because SDS knows that vision means something this year. It means, it means something every year, theoretically, but I feel like it's glaringly obvious that the differences it makes this year, because the hitting otherwise is pretty good, um, that that's just an odd thing. This is a weird example to start with. We're comparing a 95 to a 99, but still, why isn't the vision either the same or better on this 99? I just don't understand. Michael Harris. Michael Harris. As you can see, we're removing set restrictions here just for the sake of comparisons. Michael Harris's last card was a 98. It has max contact. I would love a Michael Harris 99 with max contact. If you give the postseason Michael Harris max contact, it is a very, very viable, dangerous card. I understand why it didn't happen in terms of what happened on paper. From everything I've heard, and the little bit I've watched, Michael Harris did not have a very good offensive postseason, albeit a very short postseason. Sorry, Brave Sands. Um, also, sorry, me, who put 20 bucks on the Braves to win the World Series. So, LOL, idiot. Um, the fact that he got a 99 at all is kind of silly based on how, how piss poor he hit, but he did make a, an absolutely incredible game-ending double play. So, that's why he has max fielding and everything like that. But, I would argue... The 98 is the better card. I know you see all the green check marks on the left. This Michael Harris has better power, so he's not a contact hitter. He's got slightly better vision. The fielding is a diamond all the way around, no matter what, on either card. This one's just a little better in terms of reaction, fielding, arm accuracy, and strength. But the max contact is a big effing deal if you play on difficulties beyond All-Star. If you don't, it doesn't matter. This conversation's a moot point anyway. It's just silly to me that these discrepancies exist. Of course, the 98 is a player of the month card. It's based off a vacuum, a small sample size. He was MLB top 10 in average and war that month. It was June, 2023. I get it. I understand. I'm not saying outlandish things here. I understand why these things exist. 
But the point of this exercise is just to compare and contrast set four postseason cards that are supposed to be, theoretically, some of the best cards we get all year with previous versions of those players. Okay? I hope you all understand. Thank you for, thank you for your time. Nick Castellanos. I'm curious what this one looks like. Because this Casty card, if we're being honest, is pretty damn good. Okay. Interesting things here. The speed and reaction are better on the set three all-star game. Nick Castellanos, which is odd. They should, I mean, just be the same. The stealing is better on that too. Odd should be the same. Those are not big deal stats. They're only like a couple off. The vision is better on the postseason one. The powers are better on the postseason one. But we have max contact on both sides for the all-star card and only max contact left on the postseason card. Contact right is only 108. This is interesting. I would prefer a mishmash of these two cards, but again, I max contact is so important when you're talking about PCI size and the way the bat impacts the ball. It's just interesting that we're at the point in the year where set four lives forever. And this might not even be the best Nikki sticks, Nikki two bags in the game. This is, this, this is why, if the Phillies win the World Series, I hope that they just absolutely juice the gills out of this card. Give them max contact right. Give them max vision. Fuck with the speed a little bit. Like, have some fun. This is, this is going to sound like I am, a, I am like a, a, a spoiled, begging, whining child. I understand that this episode is going to come off a little weird. Like, why is it every card so good all the time? I uh, Listen, I get it. But it's, it's October 22nd when I'm recording this. We need to get players playing this game again, right? We got to get people invested, involved, enthused. And it's not happening right now. And then you compare the Supercharged Castellanos, just for the sake of shits and giggles, to the postseason one, and the Supercharged card just beats the piss out of it. I don't know. Just a thought. Just a thought. Let's go to Austin Riley over at third. Braves. Braves, Braves, Braves. Boom. Okay. The All-Star Game, Austin Riley. Sig oh, I forgot, by the way. Two things. Michael Harris's clutch is only a 97. Castellanos is, is max, thankfully. Clutch is important to talk about here. Austin Riley's is also max. But it's just important to bring up. We're going to make sure we bring that up throughout the rest of these comparisons. Hands down, without question, not even a consideration, the all-star game Austin Riley is light years better. Better contact versus both sides. Better vision by 14, which is a lot when you're talking about 93 versus 107. That's a crispy, crispy difference. Austin Riley in the postseason has more power versus right, but 106 to 113 when we're talking about power, you're already in the power hitter category, so it's not a, it's not a problem. Uh, the fielding is much better, not much better, but it just better in all four categories for Austin Riley, but at third... You don't really need it. And at P3, the All-Star Game 1 would become a diamond. It's it's not a problem. It's just odd to me. And then the All-Star Game, Austin Riley, has 120 clutch, where if you P5 at its max. So it's a wash. It is odd. Again, I know the Braves didn't have the bestest of series. But still, it's just interesting. It's interesting to think about, interesting to talk about. And you would think one of these postseason cards along the way would blow the balls off of their previous version. And we've talked about one, two, three, four cards already, and none of them have blown the balls off the previous version. So, here you go. Let's talk about Royce Lewis. Admittedly, not a bad card. The 80 vision is rough. But, offensively, outside of vision, very well put together. I'm a fan of his build. I believe Royce Lewis's best card prior to that was like a 96, 95. It's a Tops Now card. It's a 96. Oh, no, it's not a Tops Now card. Excuse me. It's a Future Star. The Future Star card! 
is much better in the field. I think Royce Lewis, they have listed at DH. Didn't Royce Lewis play a lot of... Uh, play. Play a lot of DH? I'm going to see. Royce Lewis. Um, twins. Lineups. Playoffs. I'm going to say... Wasn't Royce Lewis DHing a lot? I don't know if that was because of injury or if that was because he was just a shit fielder. I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. I'm going to look this up on the fly, though. Uh... Twins, 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 twins. All right, Royce Lewis third, Royce Lewis third, Royce Lewis dh there against the lefty, Royce Lewis dh there against Verlander, Royce Lewis dh, Royce Lewis dh the first few games, he, all right, the dh at third, so maybe right now he's not fielding a lot, maybe he, he was playing hurt, I don't know. Uh, offensively, this Royce Lewis card is so much better. The vision being better on the Future Star card is wild. The speed being better is funny. Uh, this one's a tough comparison because we know that they juice Future Star's cards to make them semi-usable and fun. But again, it's a postseason card. I just, I, I, I don't get it. And, and Royce Lewis had an electric postseason. Twins fans, you guys made some progress this year. You made some progress this postseason. There's a lot of positive things to look forward to. Royce Lewis is a future, if not already, super stud. But his card is not incredible. If they made his vision significantly better, like we're talking 90 to 95, and even like a little bit, eh, nah, you know what? Let's compare him when he's at his primary. Oh, they did give him a 97. This is a better comparison. We're going to do this on the fly. Look, we do it live. The tops now, Royce Lewis. I knew he had a tops now. Is a third baseman. And, all right, the postseason card is much better than that. Fine. Good. Now all's right in the world. But still, my point stands. Royce Lewis has a really nice swing. A lot of fun player. A lot of fun card. Let's make it as good as possible. Thank you. And like I said, Max Clutch. Okay, Bryson, stop. Does he have... He's got to have something, right? Are you guys getting any value in this episode? I feel like I'm just ranting nonsensically, but I feel like I also do that all the time. Bryson Stott might not have another card, which will make this video, this portion of this video, a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, the Bryson Stott card is very fun and very good. I wish he had a little bit better hitting stats versus righty, hitting attributes versus righties, but either way, whatever. Uh, Bryson Stott, by the way, who hit a grand slam to send the Phillies to the NLDS. 116 clutch. Make it make sense. Don't understand. Josh Bell. What does Josh Bell have? Does he have any any friends that we can compare him to? Probably not on the Marlins, other than his live series. Let's check Cleveland. What other teams does he play? I might just have to search by name. Let's just search by name to make this easy. Because he's played in a few places. There we go. The 97 Josh Bell from his Pittsburgh Pirates days. All right. Listen, it's comparing a 97 to a 99, but nothing stupid here. Good job, SDS. This Josh Bell card ain't horrible. It's a switch hitting first baseman with decent pop for both sides and max contact first right. He also has 109 clutch. <laughs> Not high enough. Um... Uh, I don't know. Uh, you use it if you want. I'm not going to, but it's not bad. This is, is Josh Bell literally our first better than any other card I have card? Because that's insane. That's craziness. We're doing the people's research here. Before we go to Jordan, because he's going to make me upset, let's talk about Will Smith. Will Smith, one of my favorite swings in the game. He might be my catcher after Adley phases out, if I'm being honest. It's between him and Jimmy Fox. We have three Will Smiths to compare him to. He's much better than the Captain card. No shit, Captain cards are terrible. Uh, oh God, where do we want to start here? This is insane. Let's start with the 97 overall May 2023 Player of the Month henchman card when he led MLB catchers in WRC Plus and War. This card is better. This card is just better. He, he stinks versus righties a little bit, but look at his lefties, 118 and 105 versus 107, 101. A 97 is that much better. He has better vision. Granted, I have P2, so it's a little closer than it looks. Um, just funny. But then we compare it to the 99 All-Star Game card, and better contact right, better contact left, better power right. Power left is max for Will Smith. All-Star card, vision. 91 compared to 102. We'll take the parallel uh, one away. Wow, that's a big difference. Um, 
this is kind of an either or, but I the, the 102 vision on the 99 all-star card versus 91 vision on the postseason card, they're tanking the vision on so many of these cards in order to balance them out and give them attribute adjustments elsewhere. And I don't like that. I'd rather them take away from something stupid like discipline and put it into vision. 120 clutch is fine. It's actually... I said that was good enough. It's very good. I'd rather them take away from this 94 discipline that virtually means nothing and put it to the vision. Or take away 10 points from bunting. You're telling me we need to have Will Smith with 35 bunt? Make it 25 and give some points over to the vision. It's just... It's nitpicking, but that's my role. My role is to nitpick. I feel like it's constructive to, to give as specific as feedback as possible. And overall, before we talk about Jordan... Don't get it twisted. Evan Carter, a lot of fun to use. Great swing. Nick Castellanos, he might be a little worse. He's still a crazy Nick Castellanos. Bryson Stott, great swing. Royce Lewis, great swing. Austin Riley, a ton of fun to use. Will Smith, like I said, might be my God Squad catcher. Like, these guys are still viable and fun and good. I just, at this point in the year, I want them to be insanely juiced. Now, you're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. What have they done to you? What hath they done? Do I not have 99 Yordan? Well, isn't that fun? I have 97 Yordan. I guess I have to go buy Yordan. Please hold. <laughs> We're doing it live. I don't have a lot of these cards. Because I, like, if I don't use them, I just get rid of them. If I've completed collections already. Do I really not have this? All right, well, we'll waste 42k just to have him and compare him for the sake of the video. You guys are welcome. Don't say... I mean, I have 3.3 .3 million stubs, but don't say I've never done nothing for you. Okay, let's try this again. We're doing it live, as we always do. Your daddy. The set two Kaiju Yordan Alvarez is significantly... Significantly better. Significantly. The postseason Jordan leads in two categories that show up on the player comparison screen. He's got 114 contact right versus 103. That is a significant difference. He also has 86 vision compared to 84. Not even worth considering as a difference. Meanwhile, the Kaiju, which is a fake card series, by the way, has 117 contact left compared to 99 postseasons 105. Big difference. It has better... The Kaiju has better speed by 5, better stealing by 13. You're not stealing with him anyway. Better arm strength, better fielding, better reaction. The Kaiju Yordan has 108 clutch. The postseason Yordan has 117 clutch. Why does it postseason your Don Alvarez have max clutch off rip, by the way? This man is a murderer of baseballs. He had four home runs and two doubles with six RBIs in the division series. The card this is the, the series this is based off of. Give him max clutch. 86 vision, also not high enough. If they ever give us a high vision your Don Alvarez, it's going to be exactly what it was like when they gave us a high vision Ronald Acuna. He's going to take souls. And I hope that we someday get one. Jordan has such a nice swing, he is hurt significantly by that low vision. It is astounding to me that Jordan put together the best individual, the best postseason series of any individual this year. So far. Through the division series. You could argue Nick Castellanos. It's close. It's close. It's a toss-up. We'll say he's at least tied. For the best single series of anybody this year, and he only has 116 clutch, and because uh, 117 clutch, and because of his vision, and because he can't hit lefties, kind of, he's basically useless. I'd rather use John Carlos Stanton at DH, or any or Juan Soto, or Jimmy Fox, or like there's a million guys I'd rather use over this card. When we get to the bench, we're gonna spend less time on the bench because I don't think these cards really move the needle. This Lord Escariel card is actually pretty pretty okay. I don't know if we have anything to compare him to. Have they given us another Lord Escariel? Have they not? Is he a Blue Jay? Let's look him up. Oh, it's set, I have the set four restriction on. That's why. That's why. 
lore days. I, I thought we had another one. Or I'm making it up because I'm a stupid idiot. It did it again. It did it a fucking again. Okay. Now we can appropriately look for Lord Escarillo. These menus are so counterintuitive sometimes, guys. Uh, here he is. I knew we had one. Okay, the postseason Lord Escuriel is much better than the 97, of course, uh, Player of the Month henchman card. Lord Escuriel is not bad if you like his swing. I'm not a huge fan of his swing, but he's got 116 clutch and 102 vision, and when we're talking about a series of cards that doesn't have any vision, much better. Also great in the field and plays a lot of positions. This guy's not bad. His power left's a little low, but you might be able to get past that if you want to use some sort of captain boost on him. Um, all right, not a bad card. Josh Young, I don't think has... Does Josh Young have another card? Josh Young. Oh, he does, the 97. Holy Christ! His 97 All-Star Game card is better, guys, uh, by a lot. By a lot, a lot. Holy Lord. Wow, that's astounding. Yeah, that's weird. 103 clutch on the All-Star Game card. 119 clutch, that's a big deal. Josh Young has been incredible. Um, it's just, it's just, I don't, I don't understand. I don't, how is it, how is a 97 more useful? Willie Adamas, let's see. He has a nice swing. He really does. It's a shame that just better cards exist because this card is actually a lot of fun if you like Willie Adamas' swing like I do. Um, have we not gotten a better Willie Adamas? 89, that doesn't even make sense to compare him to. I'm going to search him by name just to be sure. I don't think he got a raise card. That's interesting. That this is the first Willie... Oh, there has to be another Willie Adamas. I might not just own it. Hold on. Wasn't there a Kaiju one? Here I go, buying more bullshit for you guys. Here I go. Yeah, there was. Another 50k down the drain for the content. It's fine, I don't care. Stubs are not real at this point in the year. Stubs are not real, so we'll do it. Okay, going back now. Willie Adamas. Wow. Okay, um... <laughs> Kaiju Willie Adamas has 100 vision. And postseason has 82. There are more green check marks for the postseason, Willie Adamas, but there are some very important ones on the Kaiju one, like the 100 Vision. He also has max clutch, and this one has 113. That's, that's a toss-up right there, guys. I think I might... I don't know. I don't want to just say I want to keep using the older version of the card because I'm trying to be fair here, but I might want to use... The contacts are better on this current Willy Adamas, which is a big deal, but the vision is worse, so that kind of offsets each other. The fielding is, is, is a little better for the postseason one, but, like, negligible. Like, really negligible. The speed is better, 11 difference, but, like, 62 versus 7... or 72, so 10 difference is not enormous. It's a tough one. It's a tough call, but this just shows you it's weird that these postseason cards aren't better. Jose Abreu. I'm just going to not waste time and I'm going to search by name. I should just go to the marketplace, actually. There's a 97 Jose Abreu. The postseason one is just significantly better. The supercharged Abreu is better. Again, odd. I'm going to go to the marketplace one more time. Just make sure we didn't get some other, like, incognito bullshit Jose Abreu or something. We didn't. Okay. So Jose Abreu's current card is better. Hooray! That makes the current list of postseason cards that are better than their old ones. Josh Bell, Guriel, which doesn't really count, and Abreu. Woo! We did it, guys. Jordan Montgomery does not have a 99. Pablo, all right. We have a big conversation to have here about Pablo Lopez, guys. A big one. Pablo Lopez's 99, attribute-wise, significantly better than the 97. But the 97, to this day, right now, is still more viable because he has a cutter. This 99 postseason Pablo Lopez, they ruined by taking away a cutter. It was his best pitch to work off his sinker. This card has a slurve and a curveball. You don't need both. Why now, in the postseason, 
are they making these cards less viable? I don't like it. Merrill Kelly doesn't have one. Ranger Suarez, I don't think anybody's using Ranger Suarez, but I know he has another card, so we'll just look at it. Um, Stamina's better, Clutch better, BB per 9 better, K9 hit 9, homer, holy crap. Um, and that is a toss-up. This one's really not a big deal. The K per 9 and the hit per 9 are marginally better on the player of the month henchman, but not enough to make a difference, so that's that's not a big deal. Now, the only relievers I wanted to talk about here... First of all, shout out to SDS for making some of these guys viable. Brian Abreu on his live series doesn't have a sinker. They gave him one here. I think this Brian Abreu card's actually really good. Zach Little, I said last week this card sucks. Some of you guys thought differently. That's fine. That's the point of having so many cards. But shout out to the sinker. Kevin Ginkle, sinker. Um, Matt Strom, sinker and cutter. I think this card is excellent. It's in my bullpen. It's not even a question. Brock Stewart, no. McGill, we talked about giving the outlier knuckle curve. There are two, three cards I want to talk about here, and then we'll end the video. Why does this Chris Paddock exist? It does nothing well. It has a four seam, a circle change, a 12-6, and a slider. His other cards have cutters. Make it make sense. It also has no quirks, no redeeming qualities. The Twins had other players that we could have given cool stuff to. Instead, Chris Paddock has a useless card. Next, we're going to talk about Bruzdar. It is not a postseason unless we get a Brew Star reliever card, I feel like. Now, his other card I want to compare it to might be a starter, so it's going to be apples to oranges. Yeah, all right, so we can't compare. This Brew Star is good. I wish it had a fifth pitch, is my only complaint. High stamina, though, not bad. Now, this, this, this one. The Twins, again, get boned. What is it with the Twins? Brock Stewart. Brock Optimus Prime Stewart. That's not his middle name. This postseason card is terrible. I think both of these cards are terrible, if I'm being honest. The Player of the Month card is so hittable, as is the postseason card. Uh, they're not difficult to pick up. But the postseason card that pitched a perfect seventh inning with two strikeouts, we're basing it off that appearance, so I'm told, has 86 BB per nine. You don't know where the ball is go going, excuse me, when you pitch with Brock Stewart. His player of the month card, which is the same rating, has one uh, 15 off rip BB per nine. That is a difference of 29 points. I think. 29. That's a lot. The stamina is better on that one. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Just weird. Just weird. Make it make sense, SDS. Make it make sense. Overall, the postseason programs have been easy to complete. Can't complain about that. The players they're giving us... I just had to... If you guys are watching, I didn't just wave a magic hand in front of my face. There was a, something floating around. I had to swipe it. Um, the, the cards are fun. The swings are fun. They're, they're giving the right players cards. So that's good. They're recognized... It's not hard, but they're, they're recognizing which players need the cards. I'm a little concerned about what I said earlier, that, like, what happens if these guys are World Series MVPs and they already have cards? We still don't have guys like Bryce Harper, so that's interesting. I'm waiting on that. Corbin Carroll probably get a postseason card, too. I think um, Aaron Nola probably deserves one. We'll see. It's odd. It's weird. It's strange. And none of these cards really blow the balls off their old 99s. And when we're, we're free fall or free ball, excuse me, in set six... I'm not going to use the postseason versions of these cards. If I use them, I'm going to use the older ones. And I think that's a problem. But that's going to do it, guys, for this episode. This was very ranty, very nitpicky, very granular. Probably a better YouTube episode. So if you're listening to this episode on Apple Spotify, you feel like you didn't get the full grasp of what we're talking about, come on over to YouTube. Um, it'll help. It'll help with your experience of digesting all the bullshit I just talked about for the last 32 minutes or whatever it's been. Um... But that's it. Thank you guys for making it to the end. Let me know your thoughts on the postseason content and if I'm making sense here. If I'm being too nitpicky, sometimes I get nitpicky. I understand. I feel like it's my job. But I appreciate you. I love you. Enjoy the postseason content. I hope your favorite team wins and that you win money this postseason. See you next time.